I wasn't always the healthy eater I consider myself to be today. For most of my life, I followed your standard Western diet, which most follow as well. Sure, I ate healthy most of the time, but I also ate burgers, fries, chips, candy. Let's just say I ate a lot of junk food without my parents knowing. Not that it's a bad thing, but I ate so much of it, it slowly developed into a problem for my health. In fact, as a kid, I would sneak around and steal cinnamon rolls from the freezer just to satisfy my sweet tooth. After years of following these habits, I began to notice the negative physical changes in my body. I felt tired most of the time, and it was hard just going up a flight of stairs. I didn't like that. I started to feel uncomfortable about myself, and I thought and felt pretty negatively as a result. I knew that these crummy feelings were not going to go away on their own, and I hated feeling like I wasn't taking care of myself. I was going to do something about it. So I did the first thing that came to my mind. I changed my diet. I shunned all of those unhealthy junk foods and replaced them with healthy alternatives like fruits and vegetables. I became what people would refer to as a health nut. My family used to tease me by offering me frozen yogurt on weekend evenings when he saw me filling up a bowl of frozen fruit for dessert after dinner. That doesn't really happen anymore because I accidentally converted them. As I followed this new diet, I became curious about the impact of food and I would read article after article about the different types of foods and their benefits. As I did this online research, I stumbled across an article featuring a topic I wasn't familiar with, the microbiome. What is the microbiome? Well, everyone, me, your parents, your siblings, your friends, all have trillions of microbes in and on our bodies. Microbes such as viruses, protozoa, and most commonly, bacteria. That is the microbiome. I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, bacteria, they're bad, they're so annoying, they make us sick. Well, yes, but actually no. In reality, the bad bacteria only make up the minority of the microbiome. And most of the bacteria we have are good and play a huge role in our daily function. In fact, from the moment you are born to the day you die, you will be in constant contact with the bacteria that will guide your health and co-evolve with you throughout your life. And each person's microbiome is tailored by their DNA and their environment to be uniquely their own. Like people, no two microbiomes are alike. There is one particular area that deserves recognition for keeping us healthy, the gut microbiome. So, how does our gut microbiome keep us healthy? Well, the key ingredient for that is fiber, a nutrient that's incredibly beneficial for our bodies. Problem is, we can't break it down on our own. It travels intact through the body until it reaches the GI tract, where bacteria eat the fiber. If everything goes well, short-chain fatty acids are released that fuel muscle function, stimulate immune response, and control inflammation. Sounds pretty good, right? But what happens when we don't eat enough fiber? What happens to our bodies? What happens to our immune system and our gut bacteria? Did you know that the average American only eats about 15 grams of fiber every day when the minimum recommended amount is 25 to 38? Why exactly is that? Well, our culture encourages that eating foods full of sugar, fat, and refined carbs is okay. I mean, look at all the fast food signs we see when we drive down the road. And our society prefers to eat large amounts of red meat, processed meat, prepackaged foods, fried foods, butter, candy, and high-fat dairy products, like that frozen yogurt I was talking about earlier. 
What do these all lack? Fiber. As a result, our gut microbiome stars, killing off the good bacteria and causing an imbalance between them and the bad bacteria. This can lead to immune system problems and digestive illnesses. The lack of fiber we eat is not the only problem. The antibiotics found in our animal food products also cause issues. Mass-produced animals are pumped with antibiotics to control disease. But when those animals are killed and prepared for consumption, those antibiotics don't just magically disappear. No, no, no. They find their way to their digestive system, killing the good bacteria in our gut, throwing our immune system out of whack, and creating antibiotic resistance. But wait, there's more. Our gut microbiomes also help regulate so many other functions in our bodies. It helps keep our metabolism running smoothly, prevent common diseases and disorders, and even affects our moods. But because most Americans don't take care of their gut, these bacteria cannot contribute to these functions. A poor gut health, along with the poor diet of its host, can be linked to increased risk of obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, depression. I could go on and on. So why am I, me, a 15-year-old teenager, so concerned about this? Shouldn't this only pertain to us as individuals because it's personal choices? Well, when I first started taking my diet into consideration, I thought that way too. I thought it would only affect my well-being in the future. Lo and behold, I was wrong. I realized that the microbiome is a relatively new scientific field that a lot of people don't know about, and that it will have a huge effect on our society years into the future, and in particular, the medical industry, the economy, and our environment. How? Think of it this way. Most Americans follow the standard Western diet, which has high levels of antibiotics and low levels of fiber, which we've established is not good for our gut microbiome. That means that most Americans have poor gut health and an increased risk for common diseases and disorders. It's more of a collective issue than an individual one when you think about it. Now, think about what this would do in the future. A collectively poor gut microbiome health will lead to an increase in diseases, causing strain on the medical industry, economic problems, and hurting our environment. And these are issues that my generation will have to inherit. This burden will be falling on our shoulders. We will have to handle all of these unnecessary health problems, all the strain on the medical industry, the economic problems stemming from poor gut health, and all the environmental loss. The dietary decisions we make today, good or bad, will have an effect on us in the future, whether we want it to have one or not. So, what can we do about this? How can we avoid this crisis? Well, one of the answers is relatively simple. Eat more fiber. I can't stress this enough. It is the one piece of advice I've repeatedly se seen in the art scientific articles that I've read about the diet. And I'm not talking about supplements coming out from little pill bottles, no, no, no. I'm talking about real plants, real grains, Foods such as apples, pears, bananas, raspberries, legumes, whole grains, leafy greens, basically most of the plants that you find at your local grocery store. You can snack on them, cook elaborate dinners with them, mold them into any recipe you want, but make them take up most of your plate at mealtimes. You can still enjoy animal products if you wish, but cut down on those portions and focus on the fiber. You can take it a step further if you want. Try following a fresh plant-based diet. As a plant-based eater, it's not as bad as it sounds. They make a lot of alternatives nowadays, so it's not very limiting. And bonus, you'll eat loads of fiber and cut out antibiotics. It'll take time, but the simple changes we make today will mean so much in the future. So next time you're hungry, eat an apple and make your gut happy. Thank you.